A month later, the Carnegie Recital Hall reopens as Weil Recital Hall in honor of Joan and Sanford Weil. Well, I remember the time when uh, we were building a Weil Recital Hall and uh, we were rebuilding really the, all of Carnegie Hall and uh, I was thinking about that the board had decided to uh, name this hall for my wife and myself and what an incredible honor it was to have something like that done. The second phase is primarily one of expansion. Completed in 1990, it results in the construction of the Carnegie Hall Tower and adds new public reception areas and expanded backstage facilities. During this period, the hall's educational programming is also undergoing a major expansion. One result is the creation of the Link Up program, which is still going strong nearly two decades later. This program literally links up elementary schools with Carnegie Hall. What you're seeing is a link up teachers development workshop. Teachers attend the workshops to become familiar with the link up materials. Then they go to their classrooms and they prepare the children for a culminating concert here at Carnegie Hall. We have a teacher that comes in once a week for about 12 weeks to work with the children and they teach them about the composers and you see them progress during the year as they start learning the songs that they will perform. None of the children in the school had had music, any kind of music education. And they just ate it up. They were just thrilled. They just loved the music. So like a sizzle at the end. Yeah. We've been able to incorporate the Link Up program with other areas of study, such as social studies and science and language arts. come in May, it's like the finale. They get all dressed up and they know they're gonna come here at Carnegie and they feel like they belong here. There's a, a, a particular artist, a particular composer who students learn about through the year and that culminating concert allows the students to hear that music performed by a symphony orchestra, which is a very special thing. At the beginning, they was, had such trepidation about learning how to play and sing and going to Carnegie Hall. And then right before they were going to the concert, the last class we had together, the look on their faces of confidence and the look on their faces of pride, they were ready. I had the opportunity to sit with a bunch of young people in a box at Carnegie Hall at the beginning of one of the Link Up programs and look at their excitement about seeing the musicians to see the different instruments. I mean, it was really electrifying. The children bring their recorders here to Carnegie Hall and they play a simple melody, a piece that was commissioned by Carnegie Hall for Link Up. They sing and play along with the orchestra. We get letters from these kids saying, it was so wonderful, I got to play in a place that people only dream of coming to play. So they really get it, they get what a big deal it is to come to Carnegie Hall. And they have a whole new experience in classical music. We have 35 different languages in our school, and the music brought all the kids together. They focus better, they worked very well with each other, they cared about each other more, and it, it was tremendous for their self-esteem. It really was probably the best aspect of the entire year.
May 5, 1991. The music hall that Andrew Carnegie predicted would intertwine itself with the history of our country has outperformed his vision and has intertwined itself with the history of the world. Carnegie Hall is restored and ready for its next hundred years. A year-long centennial celebration ensues worldwide. The centennial season of Carnegie Hall culminates with the internationally televised Centennial Day Gala. Remember these faces? Well, they made it to Carnegie Hall, and over the past decade, so did many others. With an almost daily roster of performances and educational programming in both the main hall, renamed Isaac Stern Auditorium in 1997, and in Weill Recital Hall, there is something for everyone. For educators, teacher training programs have been created in many areas, including classical, jazz, and world music. For concert goers, an intro to the classic series was begun, as well as a pre-concert lecture series and a Carnegie Talk series. These programs probe and explore what makes a composer or a conductor, a musician or a singer tick. The clock also continues to tick on this legendary music hall. And having revisited the past, we now look to the future, to new challenges and new opportunities. The completion of Zankel Hall, named for Carnegie Hall Vice Chairman Arthur Zankel and his wife Judy, will add a versatile wired auditorium supporting digital television, video conferencing, and webcasting of live performances and interactive music education, day or night. And speaking of 24-7, the Carnegie Hall Listening Adventures website is a free interactive journey into the world of classical music. Currently, Dvorak's New World Symphony is providing the inspiration to children the world over. Our outreach is not just in the United States as a national institution, which is how Andrew Carnegie perceived it, but really getting us ready for this new century where Carnegie Hall is really an international institution and our stage is really the world stage and music is the global language.